it's Ranger Melissa from Glacier National Park and I'm with Teresa Wenham with Flathead National Forest. And we're here to talk to you today about native, native plants. plants. And welcome to the Forestry Expo Native Plant Station. Well, I'm standing in a forest. Now you're probably wondering why there's so much snow on the ground, but this is recorded a little earlier than we normally have expo. So just imagine that it's summertime and there's all kinds of flowers blooming and leaves showing on the shrubs and the trees. And in Northwest Montana, there's a lot of forests. Have you looked around and noticed how many trees there are around here? It's a pretty cool place. I wonder if you can think how many species of trees we have in Northwest Montana. What do you think? Five, 10, 20, 100? Do you have a number in your head? Did anyone think 20? because that's the answer. There's about 20 different trees, tree species here in Northwest Montana, which is still a good diversity of trees, but maybe not as high of a number as you might've thought. But you know, there's more to the forest than just the trees. There's a lot of other types of plants that live in the forest as well. There's, a, there's shrubs, there's beautiful wildflowers. They all make up the ecosystem of a forest and they're all really important. Hey, you know those other plants I just talked about, the shrubs and the wildflowers? How many species of those plants do you think there are in Northwest Montana? Still 20? 100? 500? What do you think? Everybody have a guess? Did anyone think 1,100 species? That's a lot! And that means we have a lot of different kinds of habitat here in Northwest Montana, which is great. Because you know what? We need diversity for all the different wildlife that lives here. Think about this. If you go to the grocery store and you go into the vegetable and the fruit area, do you see just one thing or do you just see a whole bunch of different things to choose from? What if you went in and all you saw was spinach? Now I like spinach, so I'm not trying to put it down. But if all I had to choose from was spinach, hmm, maybe not so great, right? And just like that grocery store, here in the forest, our wildlife needs a lot of different types of food. For their nutrition, because they're different animals, they need di diversity. So think about what they could eat here. Did anyone come up with delicious berries? That's one of the things Northwest Montana is really known for, right? Huckleberries and choke cherries, all kinds of good stuff. You know, even some species like deer, they'll eat bark. So lots of diversity for the animals that live here and that creates diversity of animals. And also good for us too, right? Those berries. Besides food though, there's other things that plants provide us. You know, a lot of the medicine that we have these days are because the chemicals were found in native plants. Have you ever heard of aspirin? It's kind of the original painkiller. Well, aspirin is actually from the bark of willow plants. That's where the chemical came from. Another plant that we have around here is called the Pacific Yew. It's, it's not, it's kind of rare, but it's here. And there's a chemical in there called Toxol. And Toxol is used for medicines like for cancer. So these native plants provide us not just food, but also they are the road path to medicine. Besides medicine and food though, they also do a lot of other things. Oh, it's really good to breathe this fresh air. I am getting a lot of what's in the air that these plants are helping us with folks. That's right, oxygen. So plants give off oxygen. They provide us with shade, although I don't need it today. <laughs> I wish there was some sun. They provide us with, actually, you know what's really cool? They hold the, their roots will hold the soil so that the, uh, the erosion doesn't happen with water and snow. The soil doesn't wash away because those roots hold the soil in place. There's a lot of really neat things that plants do for us. One of the things that is a little hard for native plants is when we have an invasive species come in. Invasive plants, well, 
They're not native plants because guess what? They aren't actually from here. They're from a long ways away, sometimes across the globe. Their seeds get here either by mistake or people bring them in, not realizing the damage that they can do. Non-native plants or invasive plants is another name for them. What happens is because they're not from here, they don't have any predators. They don't have any threats. They don't have any disease. So they're able to just spread and take over. Remember when I was talking about diversity in the grocery store? Well, if these invasives come and take over a whole area, there's no more diversity. That's bad for the wildlife. That's bad for us. It's bad for the ecosystem. So today we're not going to talk about these. We're going to talk about native plants that we cherish and value. And Teresa is going to help us figure out what are the names of these plants? How do you know if they're good for food? How do you know if they're good for medicine? How do you know if they're good for shade? Well, you should know that one. But Teresa is going to help us figure out how to identify those plants. Well, if you were to come out to the Forestry Expo site, maybe in a couple weeks, you might notice several early spring flowers that are out, like the yellow skunk cabbage that would be down by the wet area, down by Trumbull Creek, or the small purple violet as you're walking along the trail. And so, like as Melissa mentioned, there are hundreds, hundreds of different plants, many different species. So how would you able, be able to tell them apart as far as like what is native or not native? Or what plant would provide us food for people or wildlife? Or plants that do provide us medicine? Botanists, people who study the biology of plants, they take a really close look at plants to try to identify them when they're studying. And they use several different tools to help them. So they might use a small hand lens so they could really look at the detail of the different plant parts. Or they might use ruler so they could measure the different parts of a plant. And they also use a plant key. And you're probably thinking, what? A key? Like the key that I would open the door to my house? Like, no. But similar, similar to a key that would unlock how you would find out how to identify the particular plant. So I have some examples. There's different plant keys. And of course, it would, we'd want to use one and those that are familiar to showing the plants that are here in Northwest Montana. So here are some sample plant keys that are some of our botanists are using. So even botanists, when they first take a look at a plant, they have to, they are not going to know just a quick look of what the name or what that plant is. They need to take a closer look and really look at what makes that plant unique or different. So just like in your class of fifth graders, not everyone is the same, right? So there's different eye color, hair color. Some fifth graders are shorter or taller. And it's the same as you're looking with plants and what makes them unique as you're taking a closer look. So think about the last plant that maybe you looked at. Maybe it's the a flowering plant that's coming up right out your, outside your house. So think about what makes that plant unique, a characteristic, so you could identify that particular plant. So what was it? What were those characteristics? Maybe you have thought about the flower color or the size of the plant. Well, there's all kinds of different things to think about. So besides flower color or the plant size, you could look at maybe the leaf. Like there's different types of leaves. So for instance, out here at the expo site, we have a lot of conifers those evergreens. And if you notice, their leaves are actually needles. And if you, again, looking at leaves, leaves might come in different shapes, 
in sizes. Some are round, some might be skinny and narrow. Let's try and use a simple plant key to help you identify some of the plants that you might discover in the forest. So with that, we're gonna try and key out one of these flowers that you actually might find at the Forestry Expo site. So let's go to our simple key. So how a key would work is you actually start at one and you read the simple statement. And as you read it, you answer yes or no. And depending on your answer, you would stay, move to 1B or move down to where it tells you to the next number and read that statement. So let's try with our forest flower here. So 1A, the statement, plants with showy flowers. Mm. So Ranger Melissa is used, has the picture of our flower here. So let's look. Do these look showy? Like, are they very prominent that you can actually see that flower? What do you think? I think you would say yes. So if we go across, it says four. So we would jump all the way down to number four. So we would read this next statement. Plants with white flowers having three white petals. So should we look? Do we have plants with white, a plant with a white flower and three white petals there? What do you think? Hmm, I believe so, right? There's threes, yep. So if you read this across and you say yes, it actually here tells us the name of our plant, our trillium. And Hey, did you notice tri, the prefix here, tri in trillium, tri meaning three, oh. right? So we have the three petals. Cool. And so do you think that that is a key characteristic of how you might identify our plant, our trillium? Yes, yeah, that three. Thank you, Ranger Melissa. You bet. So what do you think? Should we try one more? Let's do one more. I'm gonna get it. And I think Ranger Melissa has it that she'll bring out. Here's another one. So we'll practice again. All right, so again, we're gonna start at number one. Mm. Plants with showy flowers. Mm. Mm. I don't know. They're not as showy. If you remember the last plant we looked at, they were pretty prominent. This one, I don't know, I'm not sure. So I think I would go to 1B. Plants with flowers, but maybe not easily seen. So maybe if you were walking along, you might miss some of those yellow flowers that might be hidden. So that would mean I would go to number two. All right, leaves with lobes, not prickly. prickly. So lobes, wow, what fifth graders, that? that's where I would come right over here to my glossary and look, because some of our leaves, again, there may be not perfect margins here, right? So I would find lobed leaves. And you can see, just like our lobes of our ears, right? It's got this indentation here on the edge of the leaf. So lobed leaves. So I would look and see if we have lobed leaves. Does that look like a lobed leaf? Hmm. hmm. I don't think so. Hmm. So I, it's not leaves with lobes. Nope. So I would move down to number 2B, leaves without lobes. Yes. And it tells us number three. So I would go to number three, Plants with catkins. Oh my gosh, fifth graders, I need to come back over to my glossary and look and see a catkin. So I look here and a catkin looks like a cluster of flowers that's on the branch right here. That's what a catkin looks like. If I look at my plant, do I see a catkin? I don't see a catkin there. So I would go down 
No catkins, plants without catkins. It says number five. So it wants to take me all the way to number five. Number five A, plants with prickly leaves. Oh my gosh, again, fifth prickly. graders, go back to my glossary. Prickly leaves. Here, look at they looks like they have little points around the edges, right? They, they like they might be kind of pokey if you touch them. So we've got our prickly leaves. So let's go back and look at our plant. Oh, look what I'm seeing. I think I might see prickly leaves. Does they look like they might be prickly here, pointy, these points? I think so. So we have plants with prickly leaves all the way across. It tells us that it's <gasps> Oregon grape. Yay! Great, good job, fifth graders. So we just keyed out two of our forest plants. If you can remember, we had the trillium and now our Oregon grape. So next time you're out at the expo site, you can walk around, you might discover those two plants. Thank you, Ranger Melissa. So we finished up with our key and I wanna thank you very much for sitting in on our plant, native plant station. And next time you're out in the forest and you're taking a walk, go ahead and see and look close as the plants as you're going along and see if you can discover some of those unique characteristics of the plants. Maybe take a photograph or sketch and that you can take it home and look at it later. Thank you for coming to the Forestry Expo Native Plant Station. So go ahead next time when you're out exploring and discovering the forest and you see those spring and summer blooms, remember to leave them for the next person to enjoy. Thanks everybody for joining us and go and look at some native plants this summer. Hope to see you out and about. Bye! Thank you.